Hey, Amy. <laughs> hey, Amy. <laughs> Welcome to Conversations, Cocktails, and Connections. I'm Amy Hester. And I'm Emily Reeves. And tonight we're making a mint jewel okay, tell before me about we visit this. with our guest. Okay, so the mint jewel is a version of a mint julep. Okay, I love a mint julep, especially if you um, aren't traditional mint julep served in the little julep glass, oh, yes, which little... we have some. We have some oh, up there. Yes. Okay. Um, but this particular recipe says serve it in a short glass. I'm so excited. We're going to do that. This is from the book that we talked about a few weeks Fancy ago. Fancy AF. Fancy and that's AF us. Cocktails. <laughs> And so it's uh, mint, it's bourbon, and it's simple syrup, and then we're gonna do some garnishing with lemon zest and mint and powdered sugar, which I think is interesting. Uh, powdered sugar, I used to love when I was a kid to get fresh strawberries and just sit there and dip them in powdered sugar. <laughs> I love powdered <laughs> sugar. sugar. Um, we're gonna use our diamond shaped. Uh, yes. Please look at this ice fancy cubes. diamond. <laughs> That we're very excited about. So, shall we get started? Oh, I, I, I okay. did get these at William Sonoma. The the uh, right? Didn't I get yeah, those? yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. William Sonoma. The forms for this diamond ice cube. <laughs> Only because we got the the fancy AF book, and I think the first cocktail we looked at was mm -hmm. like, oh my god, look at that diamond. <laughs> so it's so fun. I know. Okay, so we need um, ten. The sprigs of mint. This is from okay. Hester Gardens, right? Hester Gardens, yes. It smells so good. <laughs> I too. mean, when she walked into my house, I was back in my office and I could smell the mint like wafting all the way back oh, to my office. It smells, it smells so, so good. good. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to put 10 sprigs. Okay, so actually, I guess we need 20 because we're going to okay. double. Okay. So it's 10 for one, and but we're doubling. So 20 sprigs of mint, and we're going to put those in here and then we're going to muddle them to release the aroma. And then we're gonna add um, the bourbon and the simple syrup, the ice, and we're gonna stir, not shake. I'm counting. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I love bourbon. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm just counting over. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, here we go. I mean, I'm assuming the sprigs mean leaf. I mean, is a sprig technically like? Well, that's a good question, right? Somebody tell us. I don't know. We I don't should know. probably should we'll Google it, it later. Yeah, go ahead and put it in okay. there. I mean, we're going to strain it yeah. out so it doesn't Wonder matter. Girl. Yeah. Okay, do you want to do the muddling? Because I know you like sure. to. Muddle away. All right, so muddle. Are we supposed in. to put anything in it to muddle with? No, it just says to release the aroma and then add okay. the bourbon and the simple syrup. Fill it with ice. Stir, don't shake. Pour into a short glass over ice. I mean, the aroma is insane. I can't even tell you. <laughs> it's, it's so strong. If, if you are interested at all in making like um, candles or, I mean, mint yes. is just, I know. It's amazing. Love it. Aroma. I mean, your mint is growing so, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to try to, I'm gonna have to put well, some Well, it's in, in the yard pot. though. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's a different thing. It's in the yard. It did look really sad yesterday because when you were like, bring some mint, I was like, oh, I better water it. Because <laughs> it was looking really sad yesterday. Okay. All right. So let's see. Set that down. And I'm going to add, um, so per serving, it is two and a half ounces of bourbon. So I'm going to add five ounces of bourbon. Okay. Woo. Don't lose count. <laughs> this sounds really good. I'm super no. excited to know how we incorporate the powdered sugar. Well, I mean, it just says garnish on top, so I put it like in a little well, sifter, and I was like, oh, we'll just... I don't know what this drink is on the other page, and I at first I was like, Does it, do you have to have a cigar, or is that part of the, <laughs> um, part of the photo? All right, so then we need half an ounce of simple syrup, so we need one ounce of simple syrup, since okay. we are doubling, which is like the least amount of simple syrup we've ever added to a recipe. <laughs> I guess that's <laughs> because, hence why we're probably putting powdered sugar in. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Okay, so put all that in there, fill, the, fill it with ice. So let's do that. I mean, how cute is this diamond? I just have to say. <laughs> all right. Shine bright ice. like a diamond. <laughs> And then we're gonna stir. Mmm. It smells. My, my mouth is watering. I think. I think sometimes when we do these, uh, the drink, the initial first drink, it's like my lip already kind of like goes. It's like <laughs> I get. Oh, so I'm like, am I gonna like this on on film? Am I gonna like? It? All right. But I know I will because these. I mean, these ingredients look amazing. So. All right. So I'm gonna pour it in the glasses and okay. then. Um, 
Do you want to get some mint ready for garnish? Oh, sure. And, um, ooh. Very pretty. Ooh, it kind of looks like an eyeball. <laughs> ooh, I'm ready for Halloween. We can make some, like, <gasps> spooky cocktails. So, Matt came in today, and he was talking about, because I love the movie Hocus Pocus. Have you seen that? Yes. Oh. I'm gonna do the lemon zest if you wanna do the mint. Let's okay. see. Do I just pour it in put it in there? Yeah. Anyway, he, he comes in and he goes, Oh my gosh, Amy, Nest Nestle Toll House is coming out with this cookie that is something about hocus pocus. And I'm like, why do you think I'm gonna like that? Just because the name's hocus pocus? But it's got like <laughs> all the things that are delicious in a cookie, like peanut butter and chocolate. <laughs> it's pure magic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. All right. Gar garnish. I'll do two in each. Okay. Oh, don't sink. <gasps> okay, and okay. then the powdered sugar. I just thought we might like do like a tap tap thing. Okay. Ooh. <gasps> Ooh, it kind of looks like it could be like a pretty Christmas drink because with the the green with and the, the green white. and like a little snow. All right, my dear. All right, can you see like how pretty it looks? That's Aww. so pretty. Cheers. Cheers. Whoa. <laughs> The powdered sugar makes a huge difference. That's really good. It's, <laughs> it's really good. It's really good. It's really good. Maybe we should have oh. quadrupled that recipe. Holy moly. Mm. Mm. This drink is good AF. It is good AF. Like, we're going to be making this again. Oh, my God. Cheers. Cheers. I can't wait to see our guys, today's guest. Yeah. Um, her name is Lee May. Lee Brister May. Okay. Her maiden name is Brister. Um, <laughs> She's a client of mine, but is so big on social media, and she has just built like a huge business in Rodana Fields, and um, I'm real excited for you to meet her because yeah. she has done so well at branding herself, um, and she's gorgeous on top of that. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward for you to meet her. Yeah, and hear I'm what excited. she has to say because I feel like she's a very positive person. She's mm -hmm. always posting like very um, positive quotes and. And good, like inspirational. Yeah, totally inspirational, which is what we all need this time in our life. Yes. Always. <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. I do feel like lately, since all of this COVID, oh, no. I, I do lean towards reading more of that, where probably six months ago you I might have like just scrolled. scrolled through. Yeah. But now it is kind of nice to read something positive. And if you take something away from any of these um, inspirational quotes from all the people. Yeah. Then they've done something. <laughs> yeah, you lift your spirits a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And you know what else helps lift your spirits? <laughs> spirits. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let's get to okay. it. Okay. Well, hey, Lee, welcome to Conversations, Cocktails, and Connections. What's in your glass tonight? Hey ladies, thank you so much for having me. So I am having a glass of champagne tonight. Yay, that sounds good. So Emily made a um, an amazing, very strong cocktail. It's called a mint jewel. It's like an it's kind of like a mint julep, but it's okay. a little bit different. It's it's very bourbony and it's very delicious. And our ice cube is in the shape of a diamond. <laughs> Fancy, I like it. <laughs> I will make sure to give my husband that recipe. Y'all have to share it with me because he is is working to improve his cocktail skills. Oh, nice. he should nice. learn. I know. I told Emily this um, not long ago. I was like, after we get a bunch under the under our wing, maybe we should make a, a book. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah, we should put all the recipes. All our recipes like, in one book. I have been I've been collecting them all, so I do have them all in one place. <laughs> It'll be really fun. I love right. it. So Lee, what, tell us what you do. I know you, uh, I mean, I know you well, um, but I want you to tell everybody what it is that you do here in Little Rock. Yes. Well, I am an attorney turned entrepreneur and I run multiple businesses and really have a platform where I just love to empower women. I love that. I was telling Emily um, that by looking at your social media, how you're so good at putting out quotes and inspirational things and during this time is so important because whereas I probably with other people and just 
all in, in general, I probably would scroll through that kind of thing. But now I'm catching myself reading a lot of it and take away things from it, and which is really nice. Oh, I appreciate you saying that. You know, it, it kind of happened for me in an interesting way because that, that really had not been what I talked about on social media before. But once this pandemic started and, you know, I really kind of found myself in a place where I, I needed to feed my mind really good things. And I needed to find daily sources of inspiration. And, you know, as a former attorney, I love to write. It's always been something that I've enjoyed. And so I just kind of got to this point where I would thought to myself, you know what? I'm learning a lot of things that are making my day better, that are keeping me in a positive frame of mind, that are helping me and my family. And so if I write it down and I share it, maybe it helps somebody else too. That's awesome. I mean, when you are you are you just walking around and all of a sudden you're like, oh my god, I need to write this down. How do you do it? <laughs> no, I wish I was that creative. <laughs> I am not. No, I, you know, I really look for a lot of sources of information. So there's a lot of podcasts that I like to listen to. I have a couple of mentors that I kind of consider, you know, the, the people that are in my wheelhouse that I like to keep in my head over and over again. Um, I listen a lot to Brendan Bouchard. Um, I just absolutely love him. Every morning when I do my walk, that is what is in my head. Um, so he's one of my favorites. And then over the course of this pandemic, another one of my favorites, John Maxwell, was doing a, a whole bunch of series um, that he was doing free free trainings and um, just talking about different kind of, uh, as it relates to leadership and as it relates to personal development. And so he's someone that I listen a lot to. Um, and so I really like, I, I use those podcasts as kind of, and, and those trainings as jumping off points um, to, to really then be able to kind of expand on that and sort of relate it to, to how it affects me. Well, I know I see you, you walk a lot. You have like stepped up your, your steps. Your steps <laughs> are stepped up. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Um, so that was, my husband and I have been laughing. We're like, okay, what is, like how, coming out of this, you know, pandemic and quarantine, like how'd you improve yourself? And so one of the things that I did do was really, really, like Amy said, step up my walking game big time. And, and really it was almost out of necessity because I'd be like, gotta get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Need to take a quick walk. And um, so I went from, you know, walking a mile casually with my dog who does not like to walk, but we can talk about later. <laughs> uh, I went from that to, you know, really going for between 17 and 20,000 steps a day. Um, and I'll tell you what, it's been, it's been a great source of just release for me. Um, and you know, a way to really kind of get my head straight and, and I love it too, because I have two kids, I have, um, an 11 year old daughter who'll be going to sixth grade. And then I have a 15 year old son who will be a sophomore. And one of the biggest joys for me at, throughout this time where we've all been at home and not going anywhere is oftentimes, you know, they'll go on part of those walks with me. And so it's just a really, I know I'm going to look back and think like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that I did that. And so glad that I got to spend that extra time with them because that's such a treat. Oh, and that they want to go with you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've got a 13 year old here that doesn't want to have anything to do with us. So I, I appreciate, you know, a Listen. time that. That, that I can actually speak to you. <laughs> Mine aren't always super excited to go, but <laughs> they um, they they do their part and they show up and go. So I I appreciate that from them. How do you fit that in? Are you breaking it up and doing it several times a day? Or are you doing all of that in one chunk? I am. So recently, in the last, I'd say the last three weeks, mm -hmm. I kind of came to a point where I was like, okay, I gotta I gotta get myself together. Um, and cause I just felt like my schedule was all over the place, which I know everybody's in that boat, right? Like we're trying to, nothing ever feels the same that it did before. And so, um, there's another book called the 5am club and a lot of you know, really just high performing, um, incredibly successful individuals kind of use this method of that time between five and 6am. So 5am was pushing it for me right now. I'm not, <laughs> not to that point. But what I have been doing is I have been getting up a whole lot earlier. So I'm trying to start the first part of my walk around six. So from like six until about 7.15. And then we always walk our sweet puppy at night, but she'll only go a mile. <laughs> so and your dog is so cute. I will say, I'm just going to be right there. She's like, 
the a white golden retriever named Sugar. Oh, easy. I mean the sweetest, and I think it makes me laugh so hard the fact that she doesn't like to walk. Y'all, this dog is so funny, and I finally got to the point where you know we just realized we're like, okay, this is who she is. She <laughs> is not an exerciser, and it's okay. It's okay. Um, my friend, one of my friends that um, lives in Philadelphia, we. We, both Chris and I are from Arkansas, but we spent 10 years in Boston and then 10 years in Philadelphia before we had the chance to come back home, which was such a blessing. But um, one of my friends there was like, Sugar is a faux golden retriever. She doesn't swim, she doesn't fetch, and she doesn't walk. <laughs> Pretty much, that's the truth. But she, not even, she won't even get in your pool? No, no. She'll put her, she'll put her two paws in the front and y'all, we've tried everything. I mean, I bought, um, on Amazon, there is a dog floaty. I'm not even joking. It has <laughs> paw prints around the outside edge. And I was like, that's it. You know, she'll like to do that. She'll love if she can get on there and float around and not have to do anything. But she almost gave Chris a black eye. That did not work. <laughs> that's too funny. Well, so you're, you're obviously a high achiever. So um, what made you leave law to go into entrepreneurship? Yeah, um, that's a great question because, you know, I was thinking about this the other day. Um, my, my really, my whole career was really different than what I would ever have expected. Um, when I graduated law school, my husband and I moved straight to Boston and I, I didn't even take the Arkansas bar. I took the bar in Massachusetts. Oh, really? Um, I did. And then, when I got there, you know, I had always planned that I would do wills and estates and trusts and I would be in an office and, you know, I would never really see anybody. I always say like, I'm an introvert that, that leads an extrovert's life is kind of how I feel sometimes. Um, and, and I would have been perfectly happy doing that, but I, I got to Boston and, um, I had an interview with one of the top firms there and the guy, the gentleman that I interviewed with was was so nice. But at the end of the interview, he said to me, he goes, you know, I just don't think you're ever going to get hired in this town. And so I kind of, you know, of course you're like, whoa, because I had worked really hard. I mean, I worked really hard in law school and had done really well. And so anyway, uh, you know, some time went by, I did a couple of other things. And I had a friend that was working at the office of the attorney general in, in Massachusetts. And she said, you know what, you want to come down here and, and apply for this job and it's in the criminal bureau. And I was like, no way. I, I do not want to do criminal work. That is not my thing. You know, I did not enjoy that during law school. I don't think I can do that. And she said, I think you ought to come try. And, and she said to me, she was like, you know, you, you got to keep your options open. And so I, I really couldn't argue with that. And I was like, you're right. And so I went down and um, the gentleman that I interviewed with there that ultimately became my boss, the interview went very differently. And he said at the end, um, you know, I believe in you and I believe that you can do this job. He said, but you don't have any experience. So I'm going to offer you this deal. And he said, I'm going to have you sworn in as a special assistant attorney general. I'm going to give you a caseload and I'm going to see what you're made of. And so I essentially worked for free and proved myself. The time that I ended up leaving the attorney general's office that year, um, I received the award for prosecution of excellence. And um, so whoever gets that award, their name goes on a little plaque in the office of the attorney general. I'm sure mine is like somewhere in the basement covered with dust by this That's Awesome. Point. But we all, Chris and I always laugh. We're like, that, that, remember that guy that told that girl from Arkansas that she was not gonna get hired in this town? Well, so, you know, and, and and when you hear stuff like that, it's, it's, it's hard not to just be beat down. I mean, and not even try, I mean, doing something like that and someone telling you that you're not going to get hired in this town. I mean, God, you're, you're just, your confidence has got to be just, Oh, I mean, it was, it was devastating. And um, or it can be super motivating. And yeah. be like, yeah, I'm going to show you why. Exactly. It, it's a two way street, depending on, you know, what action you decide to take after that. And, and mine was kind of like, okay, game on. Like, I'll, I, I think I can prove you wrong. And um, yeah, I, it was, it was definitely that job though, at the attorney general's office and doing what I, what I did with, you know, trials and grand jury work and indictments and um, search warrants and all that kind of stuff, which I never thought would be a place that I, or a spot that I would be good at. 
that is what made me open to the idea of entrepreneurship and something different. And my boss there also told me, he said, Lee, you got to remember, you know, opportunity does not come exactly as you think it should be packaged. Sometimes mm -hmm. it looks different. And I always remembered that going forward. And when I first started dipping my toe into being an entrepreneur, that's what I always remembered. You know, does this look exactly, is this exactly what I thought I would be doing? No. But does that mean I close my mind to it? No. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. So tell us a little bit about what you do now. What's, yeah. 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 So um, I've got, I've got multiple businesses that I run, which I, absolutely love and um right now i'm also partnering with a new brand that is breaking into a new category called integrative beauty and that's really exciting for me because it's taking a really just a holistic look at overall well-being which i think right now is what a lot of people are focused on yeah. of, you know really taking care of themselves from the inside out and learning how to reduce stress learning how to manage stress um you know giving themselves products that make them look good and feel good at the same time um so that's, that's fun for me. This is kind of an opportunity of a lifetime because it's a startup company. And I have always wanted to see what that looks like. I just would never be in the position myself to be able to, A, have the finances or the knowledge, the, the expertise to have a startup like that. And this is kind of the best of both worlds for me. That's awesome. So can you tell me the name of it? Yes. So it's <laughs> called Solvasa and it is a company okay. out of San Francisco. So you said Solvasa. Solvasa. That's so it's, all, mm -hmm. it's all caps. So does it stand for something? Um, the meaning of the company is Vessel of Light. Oh, love that. Yeah. I like the way that feels. I know. Just like, right? You want to do business with them, right? I know. I it's it I think so too. And um they've done a really beautiful job of integrating a lot of different things. They have um Dr. Kristen Race, who is an expert in mindfulness. They have Dr. Ritu Chopra, who um is uh, an incredibly well regarded plastic surgeon out of San, um, out of Beverly Hills. And what's really cool about him is his practice is primarily focused on reconstruction of breast cancer patients. So he does a lot of that. He also does a lot of implant removal. And then he also does, you know, the, the, the facelifts and the, all of those, you know, other things that are associated with plastics, but he's an interesting guy. Um, and so, and then they've got the, the founder and the CEO, Lori Bush, who is just an incredibly amazing accomplished woman um, throughout her career in the beauty industry. I mean, she, it seems like I was just kind of looking her up and it seems like she's got a lot of, a lot of good things under her belt as far as like the beauty industry. Yes, she does. She uh, has, um, she has been, you know, top, top at many different companies and has grown, you know, her previous company that she was a CEO for to over a billion dollars. This lady knows what she's doing. That's awesome. And so you are in, in connection with those people at the top. That's amazing. I am. There's, there's somebody else too. Like there's a guy, right? I forget his yes. name. So the chairman of the board is um, a guy named Mr. Truman Hunt. And he actually was the CEO of New Skin, which is a multi-billion dollar industry. So I will say um, I did not know anything about this because I think it was like maybe two times, like a couple of times, maybe like eight weeks ago when I saw you last. Not, I saw you recently, but I'm just saying um, I asked you something about New Skin and yep. I had just purchased something, my one, this one product from yep. New Skin and it... I'm putting it like on my neck and my chest and yeah. I mean, I feel like it's great. And I had never even heard of it before. And then you come in and you tell me this stuff about this man. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's like coming for full circle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's an incredible guy. I mean, just so well respected. He served as the president of the direct sales association. And then he was, um, he's also an attorney. So that, that's kind of a nice connection that we have, um, you know, lawyers turned entrepreneurs kind of moving into different spaces, but it is, um, an incredible opportunity to be able to learn from someone like him 
who has so much experience and has had so much success and really understands all the iterations of the stages that companies go through and, and really wants to pour into what I like to call micro entrepreneurs. Um, that's his jam. Like he likes, he likes to help people be successful. And so I, well, I love that about him. And, and to come in and kind of what you're doing on your social media about just giving inspirational quotes. I mean, it's got to be wonderful to hear people like that just push you even more and hear yeah. and know their successes and know what they're excited about. It's got to be exciting for you to start it, in on it. It is. It, it's kind of one of those things that, you know, I always tell people, you know, when, if you're, if you're looking at something in this space and, you know, you're thinking about kind of putting your foot in that social selling world, you know, there's, there's three key things that you look for and, um, and what they've got going on has all of those three things. Mm -hmm. So what would be your advice to anybody kind of going into entrepreneurship? Yeah. Um, Okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a big thing. That's a good one. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a big thing. Um, okay, so number one is you you got to get real brave. And um, you have to be able to find people in your world that you can relate to and that that what they're saying to you that it resonates with you. And so that's where I think it's really important to find a, find the podcast, find the mentor that makes sense to you. Um, that's going to offer that encouragement. You know, I think entrepreneurship is really a journey in self-development because you gotta, you know, you gotta get real confident in yourself and you gotta learn to real, feel really comfortable in your own skin and, um, and being brave. I also think that, um, you know, another big thing for me is really having a mindset shift and, um, and really over, you know, the last probably two years, I've worked really hard on having this mindset that is of abundance and that is of gratitude. You know, every single morning, my kids and I start our day with gratitude that we all share something that we're grateful for. And it completely changes the complexion of our day. Um, big believer in, you know, man manifesting the things that you want to achieve and um, speaking those things to, into existence and believing them. Um, as an entrepreneur, you got to be willing to skill up. And so whatever space you sit in, whatever, you know, area of entrepreneurship you're pursuing, find someone who's been successful and learn from them and ask them questions, you know, be willing to pivot quickly. You know, that's the thing is, is you're kind of, you're trying to figure out what's wor what works and what's effective and, and how you can be most successful. And oftentimes that means, all right, I got to stop and like, I got to do this differently. I need to try this. I need to ask for advice here. Um, and then just don't quit. That's great. That is some really great advice. I mean, you had that ready off the top of your head. Like you've had these experiences, obviously. Yeah, I was going to say that that is from years of experience of, you know, really knowing that um, you just, it's a, it's a whole journey. And I think one of the most important things is, you know, is really teaching yourself to enjoy the journey and to find joy in it. Mm -hmm. uh, because there are all sorts of frustrations. There are all sorts of roadblocks um, that come up. And if, you know, you're willing to let either what other people think or what other people tell you or, you know, what other people's opinions are about what it is that you're doing, like you, you won't be successful. You've got to be willing to kind of, you got to block that part out and do you and what you believe in and, and stay focused on that. I like that because, I mean, well, one, I think, I would benefit very well. And if I could get my husband on board of <laughs> doing the whole grateful or what we're grateful thing, that would be such a good thing. Uh, to do. But I do believe in speaking out into the universe, yes. what you're like, what mm -hmm. you need to happen. I mean, make okay. it happen. Will it to happen? I, I've, I've done that. I did that for a short bit and I just kind of got away from it. And I need to get back in because you get so caught up in what's going on right now. And, and it really can bring you down and those things we've got to like lift ourselves back up. Um, and yeah, I totally agree with everything you just said. Well, and it's, I mean, it really is true because, you know, if, if you're not speaking into existence, then the universe thinks you're wishy-washy and, yeah. 
you know, they're like, okay, what is, she, you know, what does she want to do? And, you know, it's one thing to speak it in, into existence, but it's another thing to actually show the universe you're serious. And so, you know, that then is, okay, well, what, what action am I going to take to put myself in the best position to receive whatever it is that I'm looking for? And um, there's a great book, it's called The Gratitude Formula. And um, the the name of the author, I believe her first name is May. I'll have to double check that. I can't remember her last, I'm sorry. But um, she talks about writing it down, writing down what you want every single day as if it's already happened. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge thing because it is, it is a signal to the universe and to God that, you know, you're serious about what it is you want and you're real clear on it. Uh, buy a journal didn't you get a journal yeah I like to do some goal planning like that I'll also say that Amy doesn't give herself enough credit because she (laughs) makes things happen like she wants something and she's like I'm gonna figure out how to make it happen and she goes for it and does it so she doesn't give herself enough credit for that Uh, I mean I try (laughs) (laughs) I will say during during COVID um you know when we were closed and everything so you know Emily I don't know if I've told you this but Emily is my friend who she is the digital marketing, digital <laughs> strategies, like she's the girl, she's, she's the jam. Okay. Yep. So, you know, when we were stuck at home and I was like, okay, I've got to figure out what the hell I'm going to put out there. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to just start dressing up in my closet. And she's like, I said, what do you think about this? And she said, I think Amy has start. It is amazing, <laughs> but I will let you know that just be aware there can be haters. And I'm thinking <laughs> haters, but I was like, fuck them, I don't care. <laughs> you know, no, I mean, no, like, no. haters, but then I started making me, th- I was thinking, I'm like, you know, it's not that you have haters, like, people hate you, but right. there's, there, pe- there might be people that are, like, taking a screenshot, well, any, see what they're doing. Yeah, anytime you put yourself yeah. out there to, to promote your business, to promote yourself, to you know show what? your creativity, you're, you're going to get feedback, yes. both positive and negative. And I knew that she wouldn't be pleased with negative feedback. I, know, I, so wouldn't. I just wanted her to I know. And I, appreci- I appreciate that so much, but it made me really think. And I was like, you know what? Those people are looking at my feed. So, I mean, I'm not saying, I, I don't know of anybody that was doing that, but mm-hmm. she was nice enough to say like, these are things that could happen. Yeah. And, I mean, luckily I didn't really, there was, I think, no, I didn't really have anybody that was negative on social media. To your face. To my face. <laughs> who knows? You know, it's, I think it's important, but you do, the, the, the thing is, is you put yourself out there. Yep. You're trying to put your, put what you're trying to get across out. And I think it's awesome. Yeah. Um, and I think everybody needs to do that and take a little, like, tidbit of what you're saying and attach it to their day. Well, and that's, you know, you, you mentioned social selling. So what is, what is the definition of social selling? And have you experienced any of this kind of, you know, fear of putting yourself out there for, for getting some of that feedback? Oh, definitely. I mean, I think that's probably one of people's biggest fear um, is mm-hmm. that they're going to get negative feedback or they're going to get, they're going to get people that, you know, aren't into what it is they're doing. And, um, you know, that, that then just becomes a question of, well, how bad do you want your goals? And, you know, how, how committed are you to making them happen? I don't think that there is a better opportunity than the social selling space, because what we're able to do is essentially have businesses that we can run from home, run from our from our phone, from wherever we are, where we're talking about products that we enjoy and sharing them with people. Um, And right now, (laughs) where a lot of people can't go anywhere, it's certainly nice to be able to have an opportunity for another stream of income. I'm a big, big, big believer in diversified streams of income and multiple streams of income, especially in the day and age that we live in where, you know, things are, are, are so uncertain and, um, and a lot of what people could, you know, depend on before they can't necessarily depend on now. And so I think, you know, an opportunity to, um, earn money from home is a really appealing for a lot of people right now. I think there's a different taste for it, especially since, you know, so many people aren't, aren't even going to be, you know, going back to work anytime soon. They're still going to be working from home. It's going to be crazy. Well, I think you're so smart and I'm very proud of you. Will you please tell everyone where they can find you on social media? Yes. 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 
Please do. So on Instagram, I am Lee Brister May. And then on Facebook, I am Lee Brister May as well. Awesome. Well, you thank you so that. much for being on. Oh, y'all are the best. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a treat. Yay. Thanks so much. It's a pleasure right. to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Emily. <laughs> Bye. Bye.